and start attending. Okay, uh, well, welcome to this hearing of the Local Historic District Commission. Um, our purpose is to aid property owners in the town of Amherst in the preservation and protection of the distinctive characteristics and architecture of buildings and places significant in the history of our town. Um, we require one of three certificates to ensure that new construction and most alterations of exterior architectural features in the district meet requirements. So today's hearing is being held to review four applications. We're going to begin with an application from um, Valley Home Improvement, 24 North Prospect Street, which is a request to modify the rear of the house with new siding, windows, deck, and chairs. Um, and this hearing is open to the public. Sorry, did somebody say something? Um, the, we have, uh, as they just said, 60 days to make a final decision from when they first uh, filed. So uh, we'll try to be efficient about this. Um, this hearing is open to the public, is being recorded. And what we're going to do is Mr. Malloy will summarize the application. The applicant or his or her representative will speak, and then members of the commission will ask questions for clarification. Um, and then we'll invite comments and questions from the public, um, and commission members can ask questions after that. Um, so uh, shall we be, I guess I should begin by taking roll call. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, Karen? Here. Uh, Steve? Here. Greta? 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 Hmm. Uh, Nicole? Here. I think Greta will come back when she's ready. Uh, but let's uh, begin with Nate summarizing the application for this one. Okay, so we're starting with 24 North Prospect Street. So if anyone's in attendance is going to speak to that, can you raise your hand and we'll promote you to panelists and then you'll have the ability to help present. So we have two participants. Yeah, I'm trying to move them over now. We're through. So Patrick and Stephen, you should be uh, asked to then um, switch over to panelist. Yes, I'm showing up as a panelist. Thank you. Great. Hello. Hi. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so mm -hmm. I was just gonna. I can share my screen, or unless you, um, you know, the applicant you want to, it's up. It's up to you. But I can share and then go through. Um, images. I'm happy to share my screen. Um, my name, um, I don't know if I'll introduce myself now or, or if that's sure. earlier. Um, Jackson Powers with Valley Home Improvement, um, representing the homeowners at 24 North Prospect Street um, for this renovation. Um, I have some photos, some images um, here to answer any questions you might have, obviously. Um, so you, um, if you direct me where to start, um, I'm happy to do so. Sure. Yeah. I mean, if you just want to walk us through, you know, if you have images and the plans, that's Sure, absolutely. Um, it doesn't let me share my screen yet. Oh, it doesn't? Let me... Um... <laughs> One, One participant can share at a time. Hmm. Oh, now it does. Okay. okay. Great. Great. So um, here's our proposed plan. Um, I could also show existing conditions if that's helpful to start with. Excuse me. Um, or I could show pictures um, if that's even more helpful. I think the photos would be great, just the existing conditions sure. photos. So, um, Patrick photo bombing here. Um, <laughs> this is our existing uh, rear entry of the house. Um, evidence of a past renovation they have, you know, probably like 70s or 80s slider um, coming off into what was presumably a, a deck at one point. Um, and this uh, stairs to the back entry. Underneath here is actually how you enter the basement, which is a big part of this. Um, the motivation behind this project is to gain safer and more accessible access to the basement, um, which you'll see in our proposed plans. Um, so this is the existing, um, it is slightly visible from the street. Um, I actually have some street views 
if that's helpful to view. Yes, um, can you show us those? Yes. Let me just uh, view stop. So this is the view from me on the sidewalk. Um, as you can see, you can't see that existing entry. Um, our proposed does show a, a garage door. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, a basement access door in this area. And I could show you um, what that looks like in three dimensional renderings. Okay. Um, and just... So this is like roughly where you might find yourself on the street um, or the sidewalk. Um, so we're adding this doorway to gain access to that basement um, and then stairs up to a new deck which has a, a small overhang as well, or covering. And I could um, kind of show you, this is kind of what a similar view of that. Is that what the door will look like? Yes, yep. You have three panels on the top and then two panels on the on the lower part. Uh, it matches the one on up here as well. Any any questions on this view or um it looks great. Thank you. Um, it's been a it's been a fun process with the homeowners. Um, I love working in these older homes. I'm always fun surprises. <laughs> um, this addition, from what I could tell, is a little older than the house, um, but uh, but still fairly old. Did you mean a, a little younger than the house? I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Uh, a little younger than the, the the rest of the main house. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks nice. Um, the other. Uh, this is the uh, south side. The north side is the other other side, which I could show you um, our intentions there and what is existing. Um, here is the sidewalk view. So what we're impacting is this window and these windows here. Um, right now, this is their kitchen. This window is not original. It's probably from a 70s or 80s renovation. Um, and what we're proposing um, in this view is um, a new window here, which um, brings in a prairie style grill. And this is more of a transom style. This is a bathroom. So they don't want a ton of windows. Um, and then these windows would go away and be replaced with siding to match. Are there any questions from the commissioners? I, do, do any of our uh, visitors have things they want to say? Yeah, if any members of the public would want to raise their hand, this would be an opportunity. This strikes me as totally in keeping with the neighborhood, the historic nature of the house. Uh, and I personally have no problem with it. Does anybody else? No, I think it looks wonderful and a wee improvement. It's nice that you have access to the basement. So yeah, sounds right. great to me. Just a, a quick question. Does the top of the window trim match? So here on the north side, like the, you know, it would have follow a line horizontally across the two existing windows. It will, so it'll match similar. it with, and we'll match that same height. Mm -hmm. um, and this, yeah, this trim might show a little thinner in my program, but it will match yep. this height All right. and thickness. Mm -hmm. uh, well, shall we take a vote on whether to approve this? Uh, Rita? Yes, I approve. I think it looks nice. Thank you. Uh, Karen? I approve. I also think it looks great. Steve? Yeah, I approve as well, and I think it looks great. Nicole? I approve. It's good. And your dog? Does your dog approve yep. too? Yep, she does. <laughs> Definitely. And I approve. So uh, I think you're all set with this one. Uh, 
the commission members present at this hearing have all approved it and the commission has been assisted by Nate. Uh, so I think we can sign the uh, appropriate agreements. Yeah, so the, yeah, right, the commission will issue a certificate of appropriateness for this work. You know, it's in keeping with the bylaw. Um, thanks, you know, um, Ronnie and Patrick uh, for your patience. And so we can uh, move that along. Great. Thank you and, very much. And thanks, yeah, thanks for the very clear uh, presentation. Absolutely. Yeah, that was helpful. Fantastic. Thank yeah, you all. And, and thank really you, helpful. Jackson. Yeah. Have a great weekend. Thanks. All right. All right. Thanks. Cheers. So we will move next to uh, 46 Sunset, uh, 11C23. This is the Amherst College project, and it's a request to modify the existing front entry with new ramp, stairs, wing walls, landing, and handrails. Uh, do we have a presenter? Two people have raised their hands. hands. Yep. Looks like a few have raised their hands. All right, so Stephen, Seth, Rachel, and John, you'll all be asked to um, accept a panelist invitation. And as I asked before, uh, do you want to share your screen or do you like me to share? Is that? I, I will share my screen. Great. That's okay. Oh, no, that's great. Yeah, thanks. Am I allowed now? Let's see. Yeah. Yes, Go ahead. I am. Is everyone ready? Everyone mm -hmm. on my team here? I think so. I, I, I thank you everyone for your time. My name is Seth. I'm a senior project manager with planning, design, and construction office at Amherst College. We were before your group back in June of 2022 with um, the beginnings of this work, which is a complete renovation and nearly a gut demo on the interior of this wonderful property. At 46 Sunset. At that time, we were still exploring how to provide an accessible means of entry to the first floor, which is really important for the college. We did install a an accessible restroom um, is being outfitted right now on the first floor with the rearrangement of how we're reconfiguring those spaces. And so we worked with a landscape architect uh, who is not here today and our architect who is here, Stephen Baker, on a lot of options. And what we would like to propose um, is illustrated on the screen. And that is taking an existing walkway that is on the north side of the property and bringing up that elevation um, so that it hits this landing, which has to be raised. The landing is currently below the door. It wouldn't be an accessible threshold. So if we're going to raise the landing, uh, we have to rebuild the stairs because we don't know exactly how they're constructed now. They're currently concrete. I have I submitted an existing photograph, but this is the existing situation with the snow. So the pathway will come up along the right side, along the north side here. And what's left of that wing wall uh, when we bring a, 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 an accessible pathway through is really um, not much at all. So we were proposing to rebuild these stairs at, in granite um, at the new at the level of the threshold of the existing door, which um, is a new door to match the existing. And, um, and then to put... Um, metal railings on both sides. And I wanted to let Stephen Baker talk for a minute on why we are proposing not to rebuild these two wing walls, which are river stone with concrete caps. So I will switch views to what we are proposing if Stephen would like to jump in. Sure, uh, we were, the more we uh, dealt with the river stones, the more we sort of found they were sort of crumbling and uh, the granite solution. And if we were gonna try to keep the river stones, it sort of felt, like you were mixing uh, sort of uh, rough and tumble with refined and nice. Uh, and so at the end of the day, it seemed that the, uh, the, the, the more consistent thing to do would be to eliminate the sidewalls and do ornamental railings, do a landscape sidewall on each side uh, and integrate this more into the landscape with the, the wheelchair uh, access. This is a one in 20 ramp, so there's no handrails associated with it. So it's just a gradual in-kind slope that delivers people to the uh, front door. And there'll be more landscaping uh, all around this as well. We have this, this view just focuses on the, uh, the entry piece. Are there any questions? 
Do any of the commissioners have questions to ask? I'm sorry to see those stones go. I really like the way they look. And I think they are more in keeping with other parts of the house, uh, but. The lattice work over the front door, is there any way that the railings could match that? So the, I'm not an architect, but the black railing. Match, match this decorative railing here? Oh uh, yeah. Provided and and um, provided the openings in that railing meet the code requirements for railing, um, because at the top of this railing, are we over twenty nine inches, Stephen? I don't know. I think uh, we're we're right on the edge, and so it would we're on the edge. edge. So where we need fall where we need fall protection, you would uh, have to limit the size of of these gaps at their widest point to what code allows, which is that a four inch ball can't pass through. Um, is there a way to do a version of the Union Jack that might work in the iron? Stephen, pro probably. Um, probably, and, but it would be, uh, it might be a glass and steel solution so that you could keep the openings larger. Um, but that particular kind of uh, grill work is, is typically used on all the sort of the terraces on the mm -hmm. second floor, we're uh, on the back side. Uh, we this is our second time, as you may remember, us coming to you. On the back side, we're actually replicating that, and we're actually closing them down a little bit so as to allow for the regulations to be met. Um, and so uh, there to are to that there end, are, there is metal ironwork on the back side. Yes, uh, at railing the, already. Yeah, so this would be consistent with railings that are at the ground plane that are on the back side of the house that exist. I, I don't have a picture. Of, yeah, of you just can't side. see the, the ones in the back. I mean, they're fine. They just look pretty utilitarian compared to the rest of the house, which is so and, nice. And, and, and from this from this distance, excuse me, but, uh, from this distance, it, it looks pretty utilitarian. But Seth, you actually have some details. It's the OG ornamental iron. With the yeah, uh, so, the scroll scroll termination uh -huh. and so this is the profile. These are standard Julius Bloom profiles that the college uses all the time for our historic properties. So this is the profile they handrail, and this is its termination. So that that termination looks like you have it at the end of the stairs at the landing, uh, bottom landing, but you don't have it when the ramp intersects. Is would it be on all um, endpoints just for consistency? So it's on both sides, and it has an opening to the ramp. But it doesn't. So you're asking to, if I zoom in. You're asking if it's here, 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 and here. Yeah. Right. Because, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It looked look like the mm -hmm. illustrations just didn't show that. The, look, ramp, the, the ramp slopes at a, at a slope that's gradual enough to not require handrails. But right. Steve, we could put that little video termination. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. 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 That's what that, that's what I was suggesting. If you went yep. to the 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 computer generated images, it just looks odd uh, that you have the return. You know, you can see that, and then it you yeah, know yeah. doesn't happen. You know, some type of termination. But, Great suggestion. Yep. A better result. And Steve, how how do you consider you know if they did use the um, you know what you suggested that pattern? Is that something you, you still want to have them consider well, they, it or? No, I, I, look, I, uh, I, I'm just suggesting. I, I the black. The, it just looks a little bit different than the rest of the house. The black railing. So I was just trying to see if there's some way that it could be unified. But it's not. It, it's not crucial. I'm just making a layman's suggestion, and and I can as a layman, I I can see that I. It's not actually practical. There are no, and to be clear, there are no handrails there um currently right so yeah we are proposing to put handrails in with the new stairs but they're required the handrails are now required by code right so it's not so we would be we would be required to add handrails to this stair if we didn't yeah, touch it yeah but yeah. steven did you say that you in the back you modified that design to meet i mean with seth to meet the current code so that you know you the proportions were if you, take a look so, at that, if you take a look at that grill work up on the second floor, that's right. sort of Ju Juliet balcony, 
mm -hmm. uh, on, on the back terrace, we modified that detail. So there's a uh, sort of a two-step in that X bracing that allows for that, you know, that requirement of a four inch ball can't pass through. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, though, that's that's on the roof deck above grade. Yeah, exactly. It's still on. It's still on the second, second floor. floor. Yeah. And on grade, it's all black uh, aluminum fencing. Yeah. On grade, it's all black, black metal. Currently, and in the new plants. Um, I, I'm confused. That, that do you, according to code, have to put those metal? railings in or are you just doing it uh, for shares safety? by code require railings yes and so even if we weren't touching the stairs we would be adding railings mm -hmm. yeah i i understand that it's a utilitarian it's it's good but i like nancy and steve you know when you're when you're approaching it for the first time the old stairs which i realize have to go are somehow so elegant and here those metal are just so, they look so tiny compared to the massive uh, house behind it. So that was just our reaction. But I, I, I would research. So to, so, address, so to address that passiveness, yeah. it's our intention to actually sort of simulate the mass of those, uh, those uh, uh, bouldered uh, sidewalls with some boxwood hedges. Yeah, and I, I think kind of adding to what um, is being said <clears throat> is it is just a shift of a residential look to more of a business look. I mean, I understand <laughs> it's, it's you know, you're needing to add um, for ADA and everything, but it the feeling is a business entrance and not a residential entrance any longer. I mean, the the Riverstone is, you know, it is a shame that that's leaving. Um, so I, I think that's kind of what I'm grappling with as well is that's the shift of it. <laughs> I understand the practicalities of, of the needs, but um, there is some loss, um, even the copper gutters and, you know, um, just some of those, you know, little unique elements that were present at that entrance. The copper gutters are, are, are replaced. All new. And, yeah, and they, in the photo set that you have, you can show that yeah. they've been replaced. Yeah. yeah, these are all new copper gutters. Mm. And the photograph doesn't, oh, so, so they're all the way around the house. We read it all the gutters, all new and windows, all the existing profiles. Um, this railing, although um, it looked great, was in horrible disrepair. And so it's been all repaired. Um, um, I will say that, in my opinion, and I realize it's, it, 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 we can differ on opinions, that, that I think it will be executed in a way that doesn't look particularly commercial, but looks higher end residential. Um, I don't think the worn concrete copings on these are especially nice, nor are the concrete stairs. Um, the, it's just worn utilitarian concrete. And so I think the upgrading of those materials to a thermal finished granite is a nice residential, you know, it's not uncommon to find residential stairs in granite. In fact, it's sold, you know, stock every day at granite yards. Right. Um, I, I get the comment of the um, river stone. My personal take on that is if we were to rebuild them with the granite, then we have a really odd juxtaposition of a very rustic material. We did, of course, there is existing river stone um, on the base of the house and then on the chimney, which is off this photograph, on the south side, all the way up. When we power washed that river stone to clean that chimney, river stone fell out. And so um, we have been, we, we pointed that entire chimney as a result. So, you know, I think we don't feel confident in how these walls were really constructed. Uh, we don't know what the backup is. And so if we are gonna keep them, we think we have to rebuild them. Um, which of course we can do, um, but I, I think uh, with Stephen's uh, uh, care, we can get a residential, a higher end residential look. Um, you know, we could, we could, for example, we could rebuild the stairs in concrete, but we don't have to use granite. In fact, it's at considerable expense that we are trying to use granite. 
but we feel like it wears better, it weathers better, it stands up to, to ice and snow better. Um, and it's a better look for this particular use for us than uh, a concrete stair. Steve? Uh, you know, I, I think we're complaining a couple of issues. I think everyone agreed, has no problem with upgrading the stairs and concrete to granite. I think what we're stuck on or not even, it's not a deal breaker, the railing. I mean, I just wanted to clarify, this is the new president's house. Is that correct? It is. Yeah, so it's, you know, I think what I'm saying is that to me, the the metal, and like I said, it's not a deal breaker. I'm sure the hedges will not mitigate it, but it looks like the, you know, like a old folks, the entrance to an old person, you know, one of the old folks home at that railing. And that, that it doesn't look as grand as the rest of us, what else, the rest of what you have there. And again, I'm not an architect, this is just a layman. And I just think it, it since it is the president's house, if there was some way to deal with that railing, and I, I I wish Bruce was here because he could make some suggestions, which I can't, uh, to make it a little little more elegant. And I understand the detail is nice, but just from the front, it, it has kind of that look. I don't think it does justice to the, what the rest of the stuff that you're doing. That's just my opinion. Like I say, it's not a deal breaker for me. Uh, so, you know, um, but it is a comment. Yeah, I mean, I mean I, my thought is um, I'm hoping the railings actually are will recess from view so that they're, you know, you're not seeing them as much, right? I guess you could make them heavier and have, you know, a more massive like newel post and different materials, but I'm I'm guessing is that they're going to be, you know, less visible. And so they're not, it's not as intrusive, you know, to the view as, as other things. So really what you're going to be looking at is then the front entry, you're going to be drawn to the door and the stoop and not, you know, looking at rail, uh, heavy railings, but yeah, we were hoping that the uh, railings be being in black, they would they would uh, fall into the background and our, our boxwood hedge, which probably should have been rendered taller, um, uh, will become the dominant sort of bookends to that entry. Yeah, I think if the boxwoods are taller, it'll make a huge difference because yeah, yeah, they'll absolutely. blend better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed, 100%. And I just have a quick question. Is the landing at the bottom of the stairs at the same elevation, the current existing elevation? So is that being raised at all? You know, you're sloping up the ground as well. So it looks like you're only showing four steps and it, there's ex four steps existing. So my guess is that is that everything's gonna come up just a little bit. So everything's gonna be slightly sloped until the bottom landing or is that? Uh, we're trying to marry up with the two existing concrete sidewalks. Are you? Okay. So, so it's it's virtually coplanar. Mm -hmm. Except for drainage, yeah, kind of. Do we have any other questions from the commissioners or from the public? Are we ready to take a vote then? Close the hearing and take a vote? So I suggested uh, just, sorry, quickly that, you know, they have the termination on the ramp side. And if the commission wants to include that in the motion, it could say, you know, as shown with, with the, that addition. I mean, it's something to discuss. I would support that. I think that's a good suggestion. Uh, well, let's, does anybody else have anything they'd like so to say? Can I just clarify what I think Stephen, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, what Stephen said just on that. So the, that is on, that termination is on the handrail piece, right? We don't actually have to have a handrail where it turns onto the ramp mm -hmm. because the ramp doesn't require a handrail because of its slope. Mm -hmm. So are we, are you asking that we turn the handrail onto the ramp anyway and add that termination, Nate, or just where we need a handrail by code that we have the terminations? Does that make sense? It so, does. I, I'm sharing my screen quickly. I'll just zoom in. I mean, so, you know, all right, would you, is this visible for everyone? Yeah, yes. I mean, would you actually um, eliminate these sections then and just end it here? Or do you like this for, uh, you know, to help guide people in? I mean, is that? Not right. It's not required, but. I, right, yeah, I get it, because it's right. Yeah. So we could put it on this end, even though it's not required um, as, as a handrail. And I, if that's what you're asking for, I think that's. That I'm okay. I'm just making sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. 
I'm sorry. That's a, yeah, that's I mean, that, that's for the commission. I'm, I'm yeah, I, I was just offering some <laughs> some opinions. I don't. I actually okay. like it. No, I think it makes it look a little less institutional. And when you see the railing closer up, you see it's it's actually um, bulkier and uh, grander than some of distance. So. All right. So you yeah, all right? So you think as is, Steve, is what you you know you think that looks fine. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Hmm. What do I know? <laughs> Everybody to vote. Uh, so we're voting on whether to uh, allow this to go forward as described to us um, with the uh, uh, scrolls at the bottom of each uh, handrail. Um, Karen. Yes. Steve. Yes. Nicole. Yes. Frida. Yes. And I support this also. So uh, I think we're ready to uh, allow this, the certificate to move forward with this. Thank you for your presentations. And uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Our third uh, question before us is 30 McClellan Street. This is a project for Joel Greenbaum, and it's a request to remove an existing porch and replace it with an open porch, including posts, railings, and steps. Is Joel here? He is. Joel, I'm gonna promote you to panelist. Can you hear me, Nate? I think we can all hear you. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not I'm not great on the technology, but Lisa is. Can can I interrupt a minute? Why does my screen not show anything? Can you, uh, Karen? Can you see everyone? Oh, I only see this screen which says recording, and it has desktop one and Google Chrome. Did it just switch? No, this has been uh, for a while. Oh. Should, I, should I leave and come back? Leave and come back. All right, so Joel, if you'd like, I can uh, share my screen. And can we you can see me. We can, yes. yes. Okay. Can you, can, Joel, can you see us? Are, you, are we visible? Yeah, I can see sure. everyone. Sure, I'll share my screen and we can. Um, I got my we'll start with the existing condition. Sorry, I'm just going to pull it um, here. So for Ooh. everyone in attendance, it's um, you know, a renovation of just this porch. So here's the existing conditions. I think just to show you quickly, this is what uh, what it will look like when it's done. So here's an image that's proposed. So you know, the roof line won't change, you know, the columns will be square, you know, you can see the, the trim. Uh, so here's, the, you know, a plan that was shown outlining that here's just this framing plan for the floor, which isn't quite visible, but here's, um, you know, a photo mock-up. So it really is taking the enclosed porch and making it an open porch. I'm not sure, Joel, if you have any anything to add or. I think, Nate, that the photograph of the porch on P's place mm -hmm. will do serves as the best illustration. Of course, it will have railings, but that's really what it's going to look like. Same builder. But are the two are the two doors. There's another. There's are there. Is this two units? In this building with two with two entrances or in this particular unit it is but this is a separate um building 
I just wanted to show the porch as oh, an no, example. I understand that. I'm, I'm referring to 30 um, McClellan. There's another, there's going to be two doors on 30 McClellan, right? That's correct. No, it's just a single family house. It has a front door and it has a, a door off the porch. Okay. And that, that's not changing. So it's an existing entry that's correct. Are you going to do anything? I went by the property and your worker said you guys were going to do um, the main entrance as well. Is that true? No, sir. I think the main okay. entrance is staying just the way it is. We've been working on the interior. We haven't made it outside yet, but for the okay. we've, we've changed the windows and the house will get painted and we've already cleaned out the yard. Okay. It has to get yeah. loaned and seeded, um, but the porch is really the big thing. You took a lot of nice flowers out of that yard. It was a beautiful they're, garden. They're still there, but I mean, that house, that yard was a jungle. The flowers are the, still there. I think the house will look significantly nicer with this new porch. Uh, yes, I, thank you. I think it will look very nice as well. I agree. I agree. And I think it's nice for the neighborhood to have an open porch. It's more friendly. Um, I think originally it had an open porch. This porch has been all cobbed together. And it, it's not particularly, I don't want to say it's unsafe, but I mean, when you stand on it, it's certainly not as strong as a new one. No. And Joel, you're going to replace the roof with a shingled roof? Is that in the same, you know, same yeah. elevation and everything? Yeah, correct. I think it's important too. And um, I see <laughs> a little bit of the pillars in the front. I assume, are they going to match the front entrance pillars? More or less. Yep. Are there more questions from the commissioners? In that case, I think we can close this part of the hearing. Uh, th there's nobody else from the public who's come to speak at this one. If anyone, um, there's two in attendance. If anyone wants to raise their hand and speak to it, they can. Otherwise, we'll give them a minute. Doesn't look like there's any hands raised. Okay, then I think we'll close this part of the hearing and we'll move to a vote on whether to approve these changes. Uh, Steve? Uh, yes, I approve. Rita? I approve. Nicole? I approve. Karen? Yes. And I approve also. So uh, I'm happy to say that we have approved your request and um, you'll get the certificate that you need now to move forward. Thank you. I very much appreciate it. Thank you for your presentation. It wasn't as Thanks. professional as the others, but thank you, Nate, for helping me out. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, have, I don't mind doing it. Have a nice that. day and a nice weekend. You too. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Nate, do we have anybody here from the North Prospect Street uh, project? We did, and they're not in the um, attendees. We can ask, is anyone here for 71, 77, 79 North Prospect? I think the owner had been here and is not in attendance anymore. OK. Well, uh, this is a project from Karen Ching to install a wooden stockade fence on the back of the properties. And so the question before us then is whether we want to move forward with this or whether we want to wait until she makes a presentation. Let me just, I'm, I'm going to, um, Karen, uh, Karen was in attendance. And let me just forward her an email again. All right. I sent the owner an email. Yeah, there was a Karen who was in attendance earlier, and I'm not sure if they accidentally left or, or not. I can always make the presentation if that's necessary.
We'll see if there's any new attendees not yet. Shall we wait one more minute and then we'll, you can let me know, Commissioner, if you want me to present this. I thought um, Kurt Shumway had emailed me this morning asking for a link because I and I thought he was going to be attending. Yeah, um, I, I emailed him a link as well and a few others. I don't see anyone. I mean, if that's the case, I would prefer to postpone it if someone's here on either side. I I am here. Oh, okay. This is Kurt. I don't feel I need to speak up. I oh, just okay. Just, All right. Okay. I just listening. Know. Okay. So Thanks. I believe this was uh, one that had some legal issues around it that we can't actually address, but maybe the desire now is to just wait and see what happens with the legal questions. Uh, what do you think, Nick? I know. I mean, the commission has to make a decision either way. So either we continue it to a date certain and we can confirm the owner will attend or we can, you know, I can present it. It's a pretty straightforward application and the commission can make a decision. That's, you know, or deny it, I evidently, right? So you can present it and then say yes, no, or condition it. Um, if we were going to continue it to a date certain, um, you know, I don't, you know, I would recommend in the next, Nancy, you're not available next week, right? So I, we would just, we would have to um, just take a look at when, what makes sense. So yeah, I'm not seeing anyone else join. Um, so I'm not sure what the commission would like to do. I mean, I think if we can just quickly review stuff so we decide mm -hmm. to go ahead or not. Sure, okay. I'll, sh I'll share my screen. The, um, so, you know, it's, a, it, it's two separate applications for two properties owned by the same owner. So there's uh, 71 North Prospect Street and then 77, 79 North Prospect Street. So on 71 North Prospect Street, they'd like to install, you know, a 25 foot length of fence here, three feet off the property line. On 77 North Prospect, 77, 79, they would like to install the same fence one foot off the property line. And so the other fence is here. So the idea is there's an existing single family home here associated with Shumway properties and there's this paved driveway to Halleck Street. So the the residents and tenants of this unit here take this back alley, park here, and then access the unit. It seems like the intent is to install a, this fence in an L to impede the you know the movement of people back and forth. But really the commission right is looking at you know this 71 foot length of fence and a 25 foot length of fence and you know it, the spec was given as something from you know six foot high pressure treated pine fence and so back in this area here there's already some existing stockade fence on the back of this house and on this property line so there's existing stockade fence you know uh, that is of a, of a different style slightly different style than this, but there is quite a bit of fencing, wooden fencing in that area. And do we have any idea if trees are gonna be cut down and things? Like whenever I drove by, there's quite a bit of trees back behind the property and I can't tell what other bushes or things like that, but I just wasn't sure if it was gonna kind of be clear cut of the vegetation to do this. Um, that's not clear. I mean, the commission, you know, vegetation and landscaping is exempt from review. So there's okay. really, it, you know, we, we can't really offer much there. Um, okay. You know, I, I, I would love to have um, a site, site visit. I, I, I was there and I kind of looked at it, but I think this is a, this is a very downtown place. We, um, I think it's an important decision. It's not, you know, do we want stockade fences to go up all over the place right there? It would really, I, I would feel more comfortable before I voted to just be there with someone who knows and explains exactly what's gonna happen on site because visually it, it just is gonna impair a lot of places there. 
Frida. Well, uh, first I want to say I'm really glad it's wood, not plastic. But I agree with Karen. I've been, I've been, I've gone by maybe three or four times trying to figure out exactly where the fence is or would be. But I don't feel comfortable walking on the yard. But maybe a more formal site visit would do that. I had trouble visualizing it from the street. I, I walked down the driveway and. Uh, it looks like it would really isolate this house in a way that would not be in keeping with the rest of the neighborhood. It, and I'm just curious as to why this is necessary. I, I agree with Karen that putting up stockaded fences all over the neighborhood is it's not what a, an historic downtown usually has. Uh, I mean, I guess also, you know, talking about people coming, going and like, we're trying as commissioners to figure this out and no disrespect, but rather than taking up a lot of an entire commission's time individually and as a group to go see this, um, I personally would like to know, like if, if it legally is a common driveway and if that can be approved legally before we waste our time you know all meeting to see whether or not it could happen like if yeah. if it is a common driveway i'd rather that be legally um sorted before we kind of take up all of our time trying to decide whether or not we think a fence should go uh, steve would you like to say something uh, well, i, I actually asked this question i mean i didn't raise my hand i didn't raise my hand but i actually emailed nate this very question this morning saying you know can we should we postpone any kind of decision pending the legalities uh being straightened out and nate said that we actually couldn't but if there's an aesthetic you know objection on the part of the commission i think that's a legitimate um concern and i think maybe it might be behoove us to um have the owner come back and talk let's talk to her about what else we can do besides um those uh, stockade fence. Right. Yeah. No. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. So the the these legal questions, Nicole, is something that really is outside the purview of the commission. So you know we can make a determination on the fence in terms of its aesthetic value or impact because of it, uh, and you know then it's really the owner's risk to install it. You know, and then they you know there could be re legal repercussions, but that's not you know that's the commission can't withhold this decision uh, because of that. You know, because of those uncertainties, and so, you know, it it happens with so zoning or land use boards. Sometimes they might make a decision on something, and then it's really the owners. You know, the owner has to do their due diligence before they may move forward with the plan. Unfortunately, right? So it does take up the time of a board or committee. But that's we have an application to to make a decision on. So it sounds like the commission would like to continue the hearing, and I can really try to get get a hold of the owner to confirm. Um, you know, if, you know, if they can't or a representative can't be in attendance, we could schedule a site visit and let them know at least. And then, um, if, is that can I ask a quick question? Nate, do you have any suggestions since there is a aesthetic objection or concern on the part of the commission? Do you have any suggestions on what alternatives could be to a stockade fence? So in this instance, um, there is some other screening on the property. I do think, yeah, I mean, I, I think, Karen, you made the comment that although, I mean, it is behind a house and there's topography, so it's it will be visible. I think, you know, it could aid the commission that we have better, you know, maybe even like a photo rendering to show what does it actually look like. And it may be that, um, to your point, Steve, that maybe a fence is just not appropriate even though it's in the back because the way it will, um, you know, it, the way it disrupts the view. And so it could be that the commission doesn't approve this. You know, I, you know, if they really want some type of screening, you know, there's always vegetation, right? There's trees, things that can have, have a softer, uh, softer appearance and that's not regulated by the commission. If they really want a structural element, a solid opaque element, you know, they could have a different kind of fence, right? But it, it would still be a, you know, a visual barrier. So 
It's also a six foot fence, which is pretty tall. Right. Okay. Uh, and, and a solid fence. It's not, there's no, uh, no break up to it. I, I like the idea of veget recommending vegetation as an alternative. Kurt, did you have something you wanted to say? I did if it's appropriate. I, I'm apparently showing up as Steve on the thing. Oh. Well, that's, well, that's a mystery sauce. Yeah, I was actually, actually, I was thinking it was you, Steve, on both lines. I was thinking it was me too, and I was wondering what I could call Yeah, um, I'm not yeah. gonna, I will, uh, conf if it's okay for me to speak, I'll confirm that there's a conflict. Um, it's my, I can describe, it's, it's my feeling that we have uh, shown legal, standing for right away, et cetera. I know that's not your position. One of the areas that has been addressed that you it may or may not come into your scope is that because of my concerns, and basically this shuts out any access to the house, um, and it is a significant fire and ambulance uh, first responder concern. Um, I, I, I'm hopeful, frankly, that the reason why the applicant isn't here is because they finally have recognized the documentations that we have provided that they can't do it. But that's not your role. Um, I'm saying this only to you to possibly save you some time for visit, visiting the site. If I were trying to save time, I would suggest possibly you would consider delaying it. And they if what I think is going to happen comes to fruition, they will probably withdraw the application and you don't have to do anything more on it. So in an effort to try to save you your time and effort, a decision to delay it might be your easiest. Of course, you can de de deny it and they can come back. You do whatever you want. But in order to save the time for the board, uh, you know, let, let the legal battle take its... And I'm thinking um, they may have recognized that um you know there's some issues that that they didn't they weren't aware of uh so i just offer that and i'm going to try to fix my computer as to why it says steve <laughs> Nate, if you, you have, have some questions i'll hang it I, I, i'm here for questions but i think that was just my point to try to save you the site visit and maybe they're not here because they've recognized that it may not quite go the same way Thanks, Kurt. Yeah, I think the, um, yeah, I mean, the commission will have to either continue it to a date certain or, you know, make a decision today. There's really, it's hard to say, let's, um, you know, unfortunately with the owner not here to uh, ask for either a withdrawal, we'll have to, you know, my recommendation would be to either deny it or continue it. And we have plenty, we have time. So, you know, the clock really didn't start ticking until earlier this month. So 60 days puts us into, into May. So, I mean, we could, say, let's continue this hearing, we'll have to continue it. And it could be as simple as, you know, if it's with, if the owner asks to withdraw it, we open the hearing, we entertain the withdrawal and we can vote to accept that. Um, you know, so we could say, let's, let's continue it till April, you know, it, you know, and it could be that we also then have additional agenda topics. We have a public meeting and a public hearing together on that date. So we can combine business as for meeting, we could say, you know, Tuesday, April 18th, for instance, or something, if that works for people, I don't know, you know what, and then we just say, we'll continue it to a date certain and time, we'd say we can continue it to three o'clock and it would be the first item on the agenda that day. That's how would the commission like to move forward? Do we have opinions? Deny yeah, I think we don't have continue? enough information to certainly deny it like I, th I think we need more information to go either way I, I i liked exactly what you said nate i like actually april 18 sounds like a great date at three o'clock to me i don't know everybody should look at their calendar and by that time we probably have more things to deal with um next day and uh yeah all right let's take a vote on whether to continue this on april 18th Tuesdays are difficult for me. Okay. Is that Monday if possible? The 17th is the Monday. Is yeah. that a is that a holiday though? Or is that Tax day. Monday is Patriots Day? Oh. oh. Do you have Patriots Day off, Nate? Yeah, town hall would be closed. Okay. Um 
is the 19th okay with you, Nicole? Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Wednesday? Yep, that's fine. Uh, Nate, is that possible for you? Sure. Uh, um, okay, how about... We do have planning meeting, but that's not till 6.30. So I guess we could do it, but it means both Bruce and I have two meetings on that day, but it's fine with me. Uh, it could be the 20th, if you prefer. Oh, I, I have a meeting that runs until four o'clock. Um, I mean, does it need to be that week if, if the 24th of April is back to us doing it on Mondays? That'd be exactly a month later, April 24th. That would work. I mean, we'd have to, you know, if we issue a decision, we'd have to, I just have to turn it around pretty quickly, but that's fine. Works for me. Me too. So Monday, the 24th at 3 p.m. Is that, you can say that? Sure. I, I, <laughs> I'm having a colonoscopy that morning. I think I'll be okay by 3 p.m. No, no, no. No, I don't think you will. It'll be dingy. It'll just make it more entertaining. Okay, let's uh, continue it on the 24th at 3 p.m. And uh, let's take a vote on that, Steve? Uh, yes. Karen? Yes. Uh, Greta? Yes. Nicole? Yes. And I agree too. So uh, Nate, is that all right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll reach out to the owner. We'll confirm the continuance and then ask for a site visit. Okay. Three o'clock? Three, three o'clock is what we've said. Mm -hmm. All right, then I think we have uh, done our work for today and we can vote to adjourn. Uh, if I have a, a motion to adjourn, I'm I'm motion thank you. We have a second. I second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nicole? Yes. Uh, Greta? Yes. Karen? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Yeah, thanks, everyone. I'll end the webinar thank you. now. Nate, thank, thank you for all your help. Sure. Thank thanks. You. Bye bye. bye.